A story is told in the Midrash about Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses. When he was a young man, after he fled from Egypt to the land of Midian and became a shepherd for his father-in-law. So one day, a little lamb ran off the flock, worried that the lamb would wander into the desert and die of thirst, Moshe chased after it. When he caught up with the lamb, he found it drinking water from a brook. Forgive me, said Moshe. I did not realize that you ran off because you were thirsty. Moshe let the lamb finish drinking and then carry it on his shoulders back to the flock. Because of Moshe's tremendous compassion for every one of his sheep, God chose him to be the one to bring his flock, quote unquote, to the Jewish people out of Egypt. Now, in this week's parasha, Kitisa, we first read that Moshe is commanded to take a population census of the Jewish people by collecting a half shekel from each and then counting the coins. The parasha continues with the enumeration of the detailed formula by making the anointing oil used in the Mishkan, in the tabernacle. Later, we read the episode of the Golden Calf, when some of the Jewish people turn to idol worship while Moshe is up on Mount Sinai. So there is a common threat. Numbers and calculations figure prominently throughout. The Jewish population was counted. The anointing oil was made of exactly 11 species in precise measures. The Jewish people received 613 commandments when they stood at Mount Sinai. They were to count 40 days until Moshe's return, but they miscalculated and were led to idolatry, a betrayal of the first commandment to worship only one God. But where, what does this attention to counting and measuring teach us on a deeper level? When we read about the population census, we can grasp God's love for each individual. Like a shepherd who keeps careful watch over his flock, the Almighty God wishes to know exactly how many people are part of his holy nation. Every single person, quote-unquote, counts, whether rich or poor, scholarly or simple. Just as every letter in the Torah is needed in order to make it complete, the holy people will not be a whole without the contribution of every individual, each with his or her own unique talents and mission. Today, with approximately 12 million Jews in the world of 7 billion people, everyone is precious. So when we read the detailed formula for making the anointing oil, we again learn that the details count. If you change the amount of any ingredient, you change the result. Only by creating the fragments precisely as specified was it possible to achieve the desired outcome. Now, exactly 100 years ago, Albert Einstein published his famous theorem, E equals MC2, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared from the vastness of space to the microscopic atom. God created an orderly universe filled with infinite details and precise cosmic constants. It is said that the letters of the Hebrew alphabet 
were the actual building blocks used in creating the world. The numerical value, gematria, of the letters are the blueprint of creation itself. And just as there are equations for phenomena of space, matter, and time, there is also a set formula for loving God. All of the mitzvot in this parasha and the entire Torah have the same ultimate purpose, to make us holy by connecting us with our Creator. As it's written, the whole purpose of the mitzvah is to elevate humanity. When we express our commitment to God through tangible actions, we create a close bond with the Almighty. The fine points of each spiritual action are the recipe for sustaining this essential connection. Torah and mitzvot are, quote, our life and the length of our days, and every single act counts. May we strive to raise ourselves and the world around us through careful attention to the mitzvot we do, and may our deeds tip the scales toward good and bring a time of true and lasting peace. Shabbat Shalom.